Alrighty, hey guys, it's me, Sergeant Pepper. Uh, so in this video, guys, I thought I'd do a real quick uh, tips and tricks and sort of show you guys what I've learned in Train Signal so far. Um, any of you folks who have been following the streams or the Let's Play or uh, just the satisfactory build at all, you will know I am uh, using trains just like I did in my last save, except this time uh, we're doing the signals, so uh, that has that has changed trains big time. Like, <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's amazing. I love it. Easily one of my favorite things about. Update 5 is the train signal and collision updates. So signals are really confusing. Uh, they have all kinds of crazy functions and limitations and things that they do. So um, I'm going to try to keep this like real simple and real quick. Um, I've gone through a lot of different designs already with my signals. However, this one that we're currently looking at should be my favorite. Uh, minimal signals, so just placing down as few signals as possible. And also, only placing signals where I want um, trains to stop. Uh, which is funny, because that means that that signal actually shouldn't be there. Um... So basically, at the opening of every intersection, there is a path signal. That one's the wrong color. And um, along the straight, the long straights of the tracks, where there's no intersections, uh, I put block signals. So essentially, there is one track for each direction and there are block signals along that track every train length. So I run trains that have 10 freight cars and two locomotives. That is a total of 12 pieces. Each piece takes up two foundations. So that is about 24 foundations of length per train. So I put a block signal once every 24 blocks. That way, there is not a segment of track that is longer than a train. Um, this helps the trains move more freely. Um, if I were to try to explain that, so I have a signal here, right? Block signal there. And you can see all the rest of the block signals down here. They lead us all the way out. So by having this next block signal in the path, it effectively means that, so once this train passes into this block, this block's gonna be occupied, right? Another train can't come in here. So by the time I pass this next signal up ahead, that train will get cleared to come up behind me, right? And then he'll start to move. But he'll only come into that block once I've cleared it. Okay, we're overshooting a little bit. So see, he'll only come up once we've cleared the block. So imagine if I didn't have these two signals in between. He'd still be waiting at the first signal. So by putting more block signals along the length of the track, I can actually reduce the amount of time trains wait for each other to clear a section of the track. It's... It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, but that stuff, that's that's the easy stuff on the track there. Um, the, the, the real crazy stuff is the, the path signals and the intersections. I think I've got it basically sorted. However, I do think that I will run into more and more problems as we get more and more trains on these tracks. Uh, an example 
for station exit and entrance. So we've got a path signal because this track splits into two directions, yeah? And this is how we always do it for getting off the main track into a station and back on. We use these sidings. So they just branch off from the main line. That way, if uh, the train needs to wait to get into the station, it will do so at this path signal. Thereby, hopefully, not blocking the main track. You know, unless there's more than one train. Once they get past this path signal, they'll just go straight into their station. And there is yet another path signal at the front of the station. So always using path signals when it comes to intersections and stations. Um, the reason is path signals will actually allow more than one train to enter and leave a block simultaneously. And that is tremendously helpful. If I were to make those signals I just showed you into block signals, they would stay closed until the train clears the block, right? So this signal here that my cursor's pointing at now starts the light blue block. Since it's a path signal, if there's a train in this station, it'll still let a train into the other station. If it were to be a block signal, that could not happen. And then it's pretty much the exact same procedure for leaving. Path signal at the front of the station. Train will get cleared up into its siding. And just stop there. I used to have more signals in this. I'd put like signals like up here and over here you know in fact I'd make this like a block signal and, and stuff like that you know signals here it technically works like you can you can do this um, I stopped doing it though two reasons firstly it's not needed as you see without these signals the track still works perfectly and secondly, having signals in locations like this means that a train could leave this station and then stop at this signal waiting for a train to go through the main track. While this train is stopped at this signal, it's going to block the other three stations from exiting. If this signal's not here, then the train will simply just wait into its station until it can get cleared up to the next signal. The same story for this signal here. See, this signal here is actually really bad. If a train gets stopped at this block signal, it will be across the whole entire intersection and block up the whole, the whole track, so. You could easily avoid this problem by making your tracks 3D. Uh, I really wanted to try this with the flat intersections, though. I mean, you'll notice I have little bits of 3D in my track. Uh, but I really wanted to try it with the flat intersections, as I thought it would be a cool test and demonstration of the signaling system. Needless to say, this is all a work in progress. I'm still learning on the job, so to speak. So, as time goes on and some updates get released, there's some weird behaviors in the signals. Sometimes things don't work as you'd expect them to. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that the AI to do with the signals gets some updates. Um, I'm hoping that I'll also just learn some things through trial and error, and uh, of course from you guys too, so I hope Everything in this video, video made sense. I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope to see you guys uh, joining us in the streams. Uh, don't forget to watch our Let's Play as well. Keep it efficient and uh, have fun with the trains, guys.
Fun with the trains.